Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about burns as part of our comprehensive uh, USMLE Step 2 review. We're uh, looking for volunteers that want to help with this project. At the end of the video, we'll give you a link that you can follow to uh, get involved. So, burns are the second leading cause of death in children and still a major cause of mortality in adults and the main types include chemical, electrical, and thermal burns. So on your history and physical, the first thing that you need to assess is whether or not they are stable. So their airway, their breathing, circulation, and um, then, then we're going to get to how much of their body has been burned and we'll talk about how to, how to quantify that in a second. Make sure that you're thinking of things like cyanide poisoning and carbon monoxide poisoning. So those are, are very common, especially in closed spaces. So first degree just involves the epidermis, and you can get a first degree from the sun, and uh, they're generally pretty painful, but they don't, they don't give you blisters. A second degree includes a little bit of the dermis as well, and that's why you get the blisters, is because you get the uh, involvement of the dermis in that epidermal dermal layer. So the third degree, that's when you go through the dermis all the way and sometimes into the underlying tissues like the muscles. And you get painless, white, or, or charred areas. And the reason they're painless, of course, is because we burn the nerves. So to assess the area of the body, we use the rule of nines. So how much of the body has been burned, and we'll show you a little bit more about the rule of nines in one second here. And uh, some labs you might want to order include carboxyhemoglobin. But in general, we're not going to be waiting for this to come back anyway before we treat for uh, possible carbon monoxide poisoning. So uh, it's kind of just a confirmatory test. A chest x-ray uh, will help us to, to assess how much uh, uh, damage to the airway we might have. So the rule of nines, just like I promised, is right here. Um, this bit breaks up the body into uh, into numbers divisible by nine. So each arm is nine percent of the body. The front of the thorax is eighteen percent, as well as each leg is eighteen percent. Then the back of the thorax is another eighteen percent. And I've got one percent for the neck here. Uh, you also see 1% for, for the, the perineum. Um, I don't know. If, if you add those together, you get 101%. So I'm not sure which one of those you should use, but probably isn't going to make a big difference. So, And the only modifier to this is that uh, women with large breasts, especially uh, larger than uh, D cup size, uh, they're going to change this uh, by up to 5%. So you might want to just uh, look up some some charts for that. Another thing that you can use for smaller burns is the palm of the hand, including the fingers, is 1%. If you don't include the fingers, it's just the palm, it's 0.5%. So that will help you to assess how much body surface area you got burned. For imaging, uh, we talked about chest x-ray, but you also want to rule out associated uh, trauma and um, you can do bronchoscopy, bronchoscopy as well to assess for inhalation injury. So when do you want to transfer these to a burn center? Well, I've, I've seen a few different uh, statistics or a few different criteria to use, but um, a full thickness burn over at uh, definitely over 10%, but maybe just over 5% of the body area should be uh, transferred to a burn center. Uh, this one is questionable. Partial thickness uh, over greater than 10% of the body area. Certainly this wouldn't include uh, a sunburn that includes um, you know, the back and shoulders easily getting over over 10%. But um, uh, another number I saw here was partial thickness or, or any thickness over 25%. And then burn of critical areas like the face, hands, feet, uh, genitals, perineum, 
you want to make sure that those are uh, taken care of at a burn center just to make sure that people are not disfigured and they don't lose function in those areas. High voltage and chemical burns should probably be taken care of at a burn center and uh, those that are complicated by trauma or uh, serious um, inhalation injury should also be taken elsewhere. With treatment, everybody needs fluids. Uh, you lose a lot of fluid when uh, you get burnt and you continue to lose fluid. So uh, the Parkland formula is the weight in kilograms times the percentage body surface area that's burned using the rule of nines and then you times that by four. So I am about 80 kilograms and uh, if 25% uh, of my body were burned that would be um, okay now I have to do the math here that would be 2,000 mill, milliliters and then you times that by four I would need eight liters um, given in the first 24 hours so I'd give half of it in eight hours so in the first eight hours I would get four liters and then in the second uh, the second half I would get over the next 16 hours of course you want to make sure that you uh, treat the pain uh, and the anxiety that's associated with this uh, compartment syndrome is a serious challenge here and so you may be need to be ready to do a fasciotomy to relieve compartment syndrome and then wound management uh, generally you, you're going to want to debride the wounds we'll talk about that in a second uh, cyanide is a real concern hydroxycobalamin or amyl nitrate sodium nitrate and sodium thiosulfate can be given it sounds like uh, the new recommendations are starting to lean toward hydroxycobalamin alone um, that's what they've been doing in, in Europe for a while, and uh, it seems like the safety rating is really good on it. Carbon monoxide treat with 100% O2. Uh, rhabdo, make sure you're maintaining the urine output over 100 cc's an hour, um, and debridement is important here. So debridement uh, consists of getting rid of, of all, the, all the bad skin, all the dead tissue. And one of the important reasons we're doing that is because of the, the possibility of infection. So dead tissue is a great breeding ground for infection. Pseudomonas is the, the classic one that you think about with burns. It could be any type of infection, though. It could be uh, staph, um, strep. So make sure that we're getting rid of the dead tissue. There's uh, been a question about giving... Um, oral antibiotics with this or IV antibiotics and there hasn't been uh, any proof that that helps prophylactically but certainly once somebody's infected you can give antibiotics. Um, skin grafting is uh, an important part of, of regaining function and, and cause cosmesis. Um, autograft means you're, um, you're taking skin from another area of the body uh, you, you use a little uh, a little what is it called a dermatome I can't remember uh, you use a little slicer it cuts off a little layer of skin and then you transfer that to another part of the body allograft is from uh, from another individual a post-operative uh, Complications include infection. You need to worry about nutrition with these people. Um, certainly the psychosocial issue is a big one here. Uh, a lot of people come away from burns very dif disfigured, and that may be the hardest challenge in their life afterwards. Margolin's ulcer, as we have pictured here on the right, is a skin cancer that can result from the scarring after burns so something that you want to keep an eye out for uh, because it can be pretty dangerous so thanks for our picture of margolin's ulcer by raj and uh, for the other pictures we used here today uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like to volunteer uh, please go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer and we appreciate all your comments and sharing the videos thank you very much